Hi, I'm James Robinson, and this is the second part of our review of the company Warner Enterprises. Today, we're going to focus on uh, operations of the company. So we're going to start today talking about gross margins, which we always do in operations. I think they're a very important metric. Uh, having said that, I'm going to ask you to ignore everything I've said about gross margins because this company's gross margins are extremely undesirable. They're just only above the bottom 10% of companies. So I'm gonna go over why I think it's okay in this case to ignore them, but a couple things to think about is the gross margins have been improving. Again, it's not a lot when they've been going from, you know, the bottom 10% of companies to maybe the bottom of 15 or 18% of companies. But um, there's a trend for these things to go the right way, and it's part of my premise for why I'm buying trucking companies in the first place. So I'll go more into this in, in future slides. But one of the things to know is that it's not the only thing. It, it, gross margin, high, low gross margins for me are indicative of a company that doesn't have any pricing power. And I would agree that Warner Enterprises currently doesn't have pricing power, but I think that's going to change over time. So for a company without a lot of gross pricing power, if you look at what's happened with this stock's profit since 2009, when they were about you know, 60 to 75, about 70 million, and you look at them today, they've more than doubled. Um, and you then compare the fact that the earnings per share have done you know, significantly better than that, um, really tripling. Uh, you'll see that all of a sudden my, my logic for why the gross margins are be all and end all starts to make sense. This company has managed to improve its profits. It's been a bit choppy and there's up years and down years, uh, but in general, the trend is in the right direction. There's a number of reasons for that that we'll get into later, but long story short, I believe that this company which had a lot of competitors, will have less and less competitors over time. I think the industry is consolidating, and as it consolidates, this company is large enough uh, that it will benefit from that. It's the sixth largest uh, trucking company in America. It has about 5% of the market, but nobody has more than about 10% of the market. Uh, so there's lots of room for consolidation, and this company either will consolidate uh, smaller trucking companies through acquisitions or through stealing their business, or through those companies going away because they can't compete on a cost basis or through acquisitions. And whether we acquire other people or we get acquired, I think we benefit either way. Yet another reason to ignore gross margins, uh, net earnings as a percentage of revenue for this company has been increasing uh, every year since 1999. So long story short, we look at the total revenues the company has generated and we look at the, the net earnings after all expenses the company's generated and we say, well, how's that doing? And if it's getting better, then that's a sign that this company uh, is in some way improving its operations. They're reducing costs, they're increasing um, uh, their efficiencies, or they've got more pricing power than they used to have. Uh, so what we see here is that, again, since 1999, this company has been ma managed to take a bigger amount of their profits and put them to the bottom line. So that's good management. I think it's good circumstances. I think it's a reason to continue to like this industry. Another reason why I like this company uh, and I like this industry, uh, you know, we, I talk a lot about the four taxes. So we have the uh, revenues, which is all the money you take, and then you have cost of goods sold, which is the cost to produce and deliver the goods and services to the customer. And then you have these four taxes that to some degree oftentimes are at the discretion of management and they can be either done very efficiently or inefficiently. And you can see here that um, selling in general administrative has been pretty constant. It's actually gone down for the last three years but it's in the same bare bandwidth. So they're managing to generate more and more profits and a higher return on uh, revenues while being pretty constant in sell selling in general, general administrative. So I think that's a real positive. Um, the next thing, plants and equipment, these guys own 12,000 trucks. They own 25,000 trailers. They have an awful lot of equipment. In fact, one could be said that all they have is equipment. That's their product is their equipment. So of course it's gonna be very high and, and I, it, that, that doesn't bother me very much. Um, I, I am not, I, you know, everybody tends to have a category where they're not bad or not good in, in these four taxes. A pharmaceutical company will be really high typically in research. And you know, this company's really high in R&D. There's companies that are high in selling to general administrative. Um, so I'm not too worried about this. Uh, it has to be this way for this industry. So inventory, the company effectively has no inventory. There's nothing to talk about here. And R&D, the company has no R&D. So I, I wanna recap, in the four taxes, our, our plants and equipment are extremely high. Inventory is virtually non-existent. R&D is non-existent. Selling general administrative is in a very good range and has been getting better and has been constant and consistent even though profits have been going up and return on uh, income to revenues have been going up. So these four taxes for me are, are one of the reasons why I'm, again, willing to overlook the company's, um, the company's relatively narrow margins because I think everything in this company, this industry is sort of improving over time. 
So by way of recapping and summarizing the operations, you know, Warner's the sixth biggest trucking company in the country. It has about 5% of the market. It's a very fractured industry. Um, there are the largest trucker in the U.S. has only about 10% of the market. So what you're going to find, I believe, is that these companies are going to start getting gobbled up. You know, you saw Swift and Night Transportation merge and became a relatively large, but not anywhere near the largest. Uh, and I think that trend is going to continue. And we either Warner is either going to get gobbled up, and when it does, hooray, we get a you know big bump in the stock, or we're going to gobble other people up and hopefully create some efficiencies and reduce the amount of competition we have in, in the process of doing that. Um, again, this this is uh, I did an analysis on Martin Transportation uh, six months or nine months ago, and it was sort of the same idea. We got a great pot. That company kind of turned around and went up 15 or 20 percent pretty quickly. So I sold and took my profits, and I and I might do the same here. But in this company, I also wouldn't mind holding it for a couple of years because I think it's going to do real well for us over the long run. Um, the margins are low; they're really too low, um, but I, they're getting better, and I think that trend is going to continue. Uh, and so, you know, expanding margins is one of the ways that we can really see a big return on profits uh, as a company. We do the exact same thing and our market profits get a little better every year. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, the profits have been growing over time. They're a little bit lumpy, but in general, it's acceptable. And what's better is that due to stock repurchases, um, the earnings are growing, the earnings per share and thus their impact on our stock is growing at a rate faster than the earnings themselves as a result of the repurchases. And that's really sort of the whole point of doing stock repurchases. That's why I don't mind doing repurchases instead of paying dividends. And we're gonna talk about this company later. It pays no dividends, you wouldn't buy this as a dividend stock. And one of the bummers about holding it is that it won't pay me many dividends. Um, selling general, general administrative, uh, they're not bad, uh, especially for a high margin business. Um, what's, but what's good is that those uh, selling general administrative costs are improving. Equipment costs are very high. I don't think that's going to change in the law in the short term. They have 12,000 trucks and 25,000 trailers, and I think that's going to have to continue. Although one of the ways that it could change is if electrification and autonomous vehicles come in, let's say in the five to ten year range, five to, five to ten year time frame, you know, you would have trucks that can go 24 hours a day instead of you know the current whatever is eight or nine hours a day, and those trucks could go seven days a week, and so your fleet could carry the same amount of products in you know I call it a third of the time. So in theory, you could generate the same amount of revenue in a third of the time and with significantly less cost because you wouldn't be paying drivers. So that's one of the reasons why in the short and long term, I think this industry is really interesting. Um, I want you to know I'm in the minority in terms of liking the trucking industry, but I do happen to like it. I think I like it for the reasons most people don't, which is that it's so fractured. Um, I don't think we're gonna stop needing truckers. I think it's a safe industry. It's an old school industry that's not subject to you know, evolutionary change, generally speaking. I don't think we're gonna start carrying things by drone. I don't think we're gonna start carrying everything by train. Uh, I think there's always gonna be a need for over the road truckers and that's what we do. Um, but I do think it will consolidate. I think that will both, that will benefit us both directly and indirectly. Um, and if there's a buyout as part of that consolidation, I'm okay with that. So I see the company making significant strides and thus significant profit trust in the mid to long term. And so the operations are one of the reasons, and I, what I see as upside in operations is one of the real reasons why I'm advising you that you might want to consider buying this company. So if you made it this far, maybe you want to subscribe to my videos, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, also hit the notification bar so you'll know when new videos come out. Also, you can follow me on uh, Twitter, at robinsonstocks.com. Uh, whenever I buy a stock, I put it on Twitter right away. Sometimes it takes me a day or two to get the videos out. Uh, same thing when I sell a stock. I typically don't make a video when I sell a stock, but I do post it on Twitter. Uh, today, for example, I posted an article I read on the tra trucking industry. So if there's something that's relevant to our portfolio, oftentimes I'll put that out on Twitter as well.